Hey, what's going on? It's Smash Center episode 29, mini side roundtable covering the PGRU 20 through 11, which was revealed today. My name is Sor from PG Stats. If this is your first time tuning in, this is Smash Center, where Kony and I cover the latest in tournament recaps, results, controversies, and more. And it's been a special edition of Smash Center the last couple episodes because, in case you didn't also know, the top 50 Smash players for Ultimate in the entire world have been revealed with the last 20 remaining and of course half of that being revealed today in the 20 through 11. Top 10 will be out on Thursday, last week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We had 50 to 31, a lot of speculation over who's over who, a lot of surprises over who's on the PGRU and who is not, and most of all of course the order uh, drawing a lot of contention within fans, players alike as well as some uh, ugly truths about people's seasons and neat surprises for people who were not uh, on the radar of the community. There was also the X factor, which you're going to see later factored into the cards. Those only display the results of the panel that was selected to rate the players based on their own opinions, their subjective understanding of them. You're gonna see a positive X factor in some cards and a negative one. A positive just means that based on the panel's opinions, their data put them much higher than what the algorithm did, which is how the PGRU is formed, completely objective, based on, or sorry, completely empirical and impartial based on head-to-heads, outplacements, and that's all. The X Factor is not involved at all, and so you'll see later when the cards come up, some people are positive, sometimes even zero, which means they matched correct, or not correctly, they matched exactly with the data that was shown, or it's, like I said, negative. So we'll get more into that. Kony's gonna go ahead and join us now. Um, but before any of that, if you're seeing this on the first time uh, on YouTube, make sure that you hit like on the video, subscribe for more updates. We have that top 10 coming out on Thursday, as well as the associated roundtables. For now, we're going to go ahead and bring Kony in. He's going to help us sort of make sense of things uh, now that they're coming on up. Um, but I'll do before- my best. <laughs> Yeah, Cody, we got a lot you. Of questions but... and I like the chat's already filling up. We got a lot of people in here. Hello, I'm gonna I do know. my best to uh, to try to make sense of some of this, but it might be uh, might be a little tough. There he is. So Coney's with us here. He is the other co-host of Smash Center. Uh, Twenty through eleven, Coney. First impressions before we get into the nitty gritty, the data. Uh, did it pass your eye test? What was the initial surprise or thought you had? One word to sum up twenty through eleven. Uh, 20 through 11, contentious. This is definitely the most contentious part of the list, which is crazy, because I thought it would sort of settle by this point. I think we talked about it at, 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 in previous episodes that, like, you know, people, you know, 21 to 50, people care a lot more because it's not really locked in, but apparently 11 through 20 is the hot spot because people are uh, talking a lot about this for a few different reasons. So, um, I... I, I guess we could talk about that after when we get to the Q&A. I could go over each person sort of as we see them. Uh, I'll, I'll give you my thoughts. But yeah, Twitter was uh, ablaze today, not just because of Hero. Also because of Hero, which I think, you also know, of Hero. I thought that would take the wind out of a lot of people's sails. But I think I think it just like incensed them because, boy, oh, boy, um, the Reddit online has been uh, explosive on both sides. I mean, people are hyped, people are upset, people are confused, people are... <laughs> Looking forward to top 10, people are making their guesses and stuff like that. So uh, as we've been sort of introducing each of the PGR roundtables, these mini roundtables, since it's just Kony and I, um, I just want everyone to be aware of all the tournaments that we factored in during this season. A lot of people, you know, still don't know that Don't Park on the Grass, a tournament that uh, MVD most famously won, wasn't yeah. factored in this season. That's a tournament that happened in the week of the release of the game, I believe the first uh, week of its release in December. Uh, there were a couple other minor tournaments. I believe Glitch was a pre-PGR tournament that hurt ZD, of course. Uh, there were a bunch of preseason tournaments that effectively were not a part of anything because we began on Genesis 6, which was very public, very announced. And so what you'll see here uh, on the right is the beginning of that weekend. Uh, February 2nd being, of course, when it all started. Big win, Smash Ultimate Showdown 2, Sumobato SB2, and Genesis all happened the first weekend of the PGR, all the way down to the Pinnacle, Big Win Championship 2, and Albion that July 7th weekend. Now, why am I saying this? Why am I introducing this again? Because other people who tune into the other roundtables know all this. Well, as we talk about these tournaments, we need to be aware of a couple things. 
You might have heard every now and then people say, maybe practical tasks even, that the tiers don't matter. Now, all we mean by that is like when you get a grade on a test, it's an A. Well, what kind of A was it? Was it an 89.9 or a 97? The letter <clears throat> grade doesn't matter, it's the percentage. In this case right now, you're gonna see that just like we announced in the very beginning of the season, all the points for all the tournaments on all the tiers are derived strictly from entrance. There was an international bonus as well of 25%. That resulted in only about 40% of the entire pot being shared by the international scene. Mexico, all of Japan, the entire continent of Europe. Not going to bore you with the nitty gritty, but just be aware that Genesis 6 was the highest rated tournament at 2100 or so. And Frostbite was the lowest S rated tier tournament, 1200 or so. Almost double, not quite. But just keep that in mind because some people are going to bring up wins from Frostbite. Some people are going to bring up wins from Smash and Splash. They are not the same thing. Lastly, you look at the A tiers, CEO being the highest rated and Umabura SP3 being the lowest rated. We have our B tiers and about 60 or so C tiers. So with that all out of the way, uh, we're going to get into our 20 through 11. Again, if you're asking questions in the chat right now, only the chat can answer you because we're not reading it as we're going through this presentation and then taking Q&A at the end. So we're not ignoring, just tab it for now. Later, we're gonna go into it. But first, we're gonna go ahead and start the video presentation, see what we thought. Uh, as it's been noted, yeah, at the bottom, it does say spring and not spring, which I just noticed right now. Uh, I know, I love it. So, gotcha. it's the Easter egg. There's 10 every season. So, 20th <laughs> Coney, this pops up, this blazes on your screen, and it's Raito. Oh, you know how I feel. God damn it, I hate it when they get on the PGR. <laughs> Jazz the Raito, uh, I'm very happy that he made it this high. Uh, Negative one X Factor. That's not very common for. So you're getting ahead of yourself like already. You're getting ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm getting ahead of already. myself. Sorry. So for anybody that doesn't know, I I hate all Japanese players, and I wish we had a different ranking. Clearly. Um. um so uh, before this gets a little out of hand, this is the first set of Rhino's <laughs> card. Third at Umabora Japan Major. Ninth at Umabora SP3. And of course, third at the Albion. Very clutch. Very clutch. Yes. Yeah. Uh, come to Pop at three. Some about us before the Mango. Okay, the kid that go with the Mango. We just abbreviated it. Uh, coming to us from Kanto, the most overpowered region in Japan. And uh, we see a Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt making its return again to the PGR in the form of Raito. I don't know another. I'm not being rude. Maybe I am, but I don't know another Duck Hunt player off the top of my head at this caliber. Do you? No, there's really no comparison. I, um, I think I mean, that's got... just what it is. Yeah, I mean right. the guy. The guy is just the guy's unreal. the guy. He's a specialist. He's taking the character to the highest level. Um, there are other duck hunts that are making waves. Uh, Ozone comes to mind. I believe he's out of Michigan. Um, there are a couple others, but yeah, Rido definitely stands head and shoulders above everybody else. Um, Rido's amazing. He's a very good player, and I think the wins really kind of show that. You can see wins on players all over the world, all across the spectrum. Nobody at the super top level, uh, which I always want to call attention to because we talk about how Tweak will drop sets or Leo will drop sets very rarely, much mm. more rare, obviously. So here we have um, it, like you said earlier, X Factor of negative one, which for anybody who, again, is tuning in for the first time, there's a panel of about 30 or so people, commentators, uh, regional TOs, national TOs, top players, uh, anybody that has a shred of credibility or a pulse, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> Basically, they rate everybody on a scale of 1 to 10, what they think their potential, technical ability, uh, results, and everything else factors in. Raito, in their minds, clocked in at 21st as a collective. Uh, as you see here, though, that doesn't affect his ranking at all. It's just basically like, you know, this is what the people think. 814. Surprised by that? Thoughts? 36%. Um, that's lower than I think somebody would be this high, but I think it's just because we saw some sets like um, Proto Bantam, I think, had 50%, which is very impressive, but, you know, mm -hmm. low amount of sets. So 36% seems low. Um, and and the X factor is, for anybody that doesn't... I was being a little cheeky, because usually, uh, if this is your first time, Japanese players will usually have a higher X factor, and it's sort of, one, because the perception of the Japanese players is usually pretty high, just the respect for it, but also, I think a lot of people on the panel will give Japanese players higher X factors, because the idea is, if they did come to more, they would probably be higher. Mm -hmm. um, and that's generally true, I mean, mm -hmm. when you look at a lot of the Japanese players, so... But Raito... Um, Getting 20th 
apparently X Factor thinks he's a 21, so that's always good to see because it means that you know the the stars kind of align in that sense. Um, yeah. I'm looking through the wins, like I said, a lot of great wins. Only really one uh, top five. If, if we're gonna call the buzz, maybe top five, which I'm not sure if he is. Confirm or not, top but, you know. ten. Confirm top. Confirm top ten. Yeah, yeah one for top sure. ten win. It seems to only be it, and Cosmos, which we'll talk about later. Which 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 is like ten point one, uh, in my in my mind. If 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 we, if I had a personal X factor, Cosmos would be like plus one or plus two. So like I would count that almost as a top ten win. But we could talk about that later. Um, looking at the losses, I feel like some of these losses might have hurt him a little bit oh, more sure, than others. Him. For sure. Uh, specifically talking about fatality. I mean, just let alone the fact that the guys ranked considerably lower than Raito. Um, that's really I. I could be wrong here, and, and forgive me if I'm if I'm sort of misspeaking, but I don't feel like that's a matchup you should be losing. Um, that well, seems like it should be. <laughs> that seems like it should be really uh, frustrating for Falcon. But I could be totally wrong. I mean, like Falcon Fatality has been playing Falcon forever. I don't know how their sets went in Smash Four, so yeah. I don't know. But I, I feel like if you're looking at this, if he could have avoided that losing, what could I could only fathom is a is a six four matchup. I could be wrong, but if he didn't lose that matchup, I feel like he might even jump a whole point, maybe even two, just because like I feel like that loss hurt him more than you would think. I, I don't know if you can speak to that. So but. you're hitting a lot of points at the same time. Uh, yeah. We also have Stuart in the chat, um, PG Stats Discord extraordinaire uh, user, and also providing us with a neat figure here that um, he's two nine versus top twenty. Um, so you start to think now mm -hmm. versus the top 50, he's at 14. As you start getting higher, it starts to drop off. Um, I think that overall, I'm going to own this now before we continue in the presentation, like being able to show someone's card and being able to accurately sh or, or appropriately show like why they're higher than the next person. If we look at Raito's original card uh, on the first side, um, treating them sort of like baseball cards, 7th and Umabura Japan Major, 7th and an S tier, a like immediately has a ring to it. Ninth at Umabora, that's an A tier, immediately has a ring to it, and top eight at Albion again. That that signals good player. That tells me the uninformed without looking at brackets, this person should be high. This person should potentially even be higher than 20th, because now we're talking about top 20 players in the world. But then you open the book up and then you see the win. So Abadango, strong player, ranked lower, didn't do as well this season. Cosmo, great win. Uh, to Buzz, great win. Goblin in the middle, lower. Same with Mr. R, same with Mutes. Puppe on the higher end of things. Scat <laughs> on the lower end of things. So now you start to add context to what he did at those tournaments. And now the, f the famous PGR myth that you hear that placements don't matter. It's not that placements don't matter. It's just that this, that's just the beginning to a data marker that like you have to research. And I think that continually is an issue with showing the cards. But then again, the losses. So at those events where he got top eight, where he got ninth, etc., he had losses like Fatality. Gluttony is a good one. Kamame is a good one. Leia is a good one. MVD is also a good one. Naru is a great one. Proto Banham is also a great loss. And so is T. So now it's kind of like making more sense. And then if you look at his set count, again, under 50%, like Kony said earlier, you'd expect for him to have more. But in that 814, you have high quality wins and high quality losses. That's the theme of a lot of these cards. And I think for Raito, he's sitting at a spot where he's definitely a threat in bracket. He's proven that multiple times in Smash 4. He's proven it already in Ultimate without any question. And if the Wang thing and the Duck Hunt Discord continue their uh, mischievous crowdfunding, then we're going to see more of him. So all that context aside, congratulations to Raito. I think Japan taking him for 20th. Um, it's either Japan Tri-State Newcomer, Japan Tri-State Newcomer. Uh, no SoCal yet, if I'm not mistaken. Have you seen any SoCal? Uh, no, and don't mean to spoil anything, but I was talking with what will be the only SoCal on here, and we had a long talk about that, but he's not going to show up in this list, so, you know, no spoilers uh, just yet. But Interesting, keep yeah. your Keep your eye open, keep your eye open. Yeah, so again, if you're tuning in, 20 through 11 reveal, we just did right to. We're going to continue right on uh, with number 19. Hold your questions until the end. Please expose us at the end during the live Q&A right now. If you're trying to expose us, we can't read it. So save your energy. Save it for the time <laughs> that's there. And 19th, Kamame. One of the few people to win an S tier. Um, and I now, think that that's why, again, the word of the day is contentious. Because 
Uh, not many people have won an S tier. But one of the day is actually robbed. You're mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. That could be for the second half. First um, at an S tier, second at an A tier, Kony. How do we make sense of that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he shows up where it counts. Uh, 25th at Frostbite, I thought would hurt him a little bit more. Um, but I'm not sure about his losses there. It's probably on the next card. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. just looking at this one. But first at the major, I mean, Japan's first S tier, that's quite a prestigious honor to be able to clinch that in and to get so many wins there because i mean that was a totally stacked event obviously we're talking about it in as an s tier in terms of entrance but let's not forget you know just the talent that was there uh second in an a tier showing that the dude is mega consistent i think he flies under the radar for a lot of people over here in the west at least just because it feels like we don't see all that much of him he's only got these three majors here and he underperformed at the only uh us uh s or a tier that he went to and obviously he won a couple c tiers but um those aren't really as sort of top of mind for a lot of people but mm -hmm. i feel like he's got that sort of hidden boss status um even though he's not really hidden at all just in a lot of people's minds um if you look at the next uh next card though the people that know know because this dude's got an x factor of plus five I don't really think that's there, there's much to dispute about that. Dude is incredibly talented. 75% on the win count uh, versus the top 50, which is just, like, unreal. If you look at the, the wins and losses, I mean, like, the wins First are just sweeps. time we see sweeps. it, like, a C average, honestly. This exactly. guy is winning out of, yeah, he's winning over half. That's insane. Yeah, and look at look at the, I mean, 2-0 on Abadongo, 2-0 on Proto Bantam, 3 on Raito, one on T, three on suit. Like, he's flawless in those regards. Um, you look on the other side, Fatality's kind of a... Again, that, that's that got to hurt. Japan um, Saboteur, man. Yeah, he's he's always sort of been the Japan Slayer. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember Civil War, he kind of ran through a lot of them too, if I'm not mistaken. And then the loss to Goblin also, I think, raised some eyebrows, but um, O2 to Neotono, I'm a little surprised by that also. But yeah, the guy's just oh, he's super disgusting. good. Very Neotono's talented. disgusting. So, so here's here's an interesting bit. This is I'm gonna split it in two parts. Notice the absence of America on the left side. America tending to be the most highest rated player so far in the PGR, as well as uh, the host of the most competitive tournament. Not competitive, stacked. Not stacked. High frequency event amount. Okay. <laughs> because here's the issue, and here's the thing in general with establishing this first season, and also a lot of the uh, attempts we're trying to address with international bias. Uh, Japan got its first S tier of the entire, se not even season, but of the entire history of the PGR this past season with Uwebori Japan Major. Uh, the multiplier was in effect. They reached it, over a thousand people. Japan has an incredibly limited venue size. They do not get the sort of venue spaces, schedules, or a co a, like commodities or accommodations that we do. Um, but here's an interesting point. He won Uwebori Japan Major. The wins that he accumulated from that were Karu, unranked, unranked, amazing player. Kirihara, unranked, amazing player. T, T-E-A, rather. Uh, ranked, amazing player. Raito, just ranked, amazing player. And Proto Banham, great player, amazing time. Frozen, at Collision 2019, which if we look back and retroactively rate it, would probably be way past the C tier rating, which... Of course, at the time, it was just entrant-based, and we had no idea or no basis to see who would flop or not, which some people ended up doing, and then we had newcomers. Frozen beat Light Cosmos and Tweak at that event. Light Cosmos and Tweak, Hikaru Kirihara, T, Raitu, Proto, Banham. One got third at a C tier, one got first at an S tier. The problem begins. And when yeah. people start to compare placements without context, you're almost playing this, like, losing game of trying to not even compare apples to oranges but it's not even the same thing and so that's where outplacements of course like kamame outplays so many people that first like jettisoned him up to the top uh 13th at smash the paramount now he's starting to dip low or no sorry that's frozen's card um where he had first at the mango first at s or second at sp3 fourth at just roll with it just roll with it could have been a chance for him to maybe get something and then 25th at frostbite i think that was a nail in the coffin frostbite is japan's place to get the wins and kamami didn't and yeah. that's that's like the issue it's like 12-4 amazing so he's definitely part of the top these wins quality 
the other wins he had, I mean, they're factored in. I mean, the, the, those people that I named before, Hikaru, obviously an amazing player, Kirihara. I mean, he came here and beat like zero like it was nothing, or maybe not zero, Leo, I don't remember who, back in Smash 4. Um, but they didn't attend much. They didn't do what they did in Japan like they used to, or come here to like the 2GG events. So again, we explain how we do it every time. I'll play I'll play events head to heads. We try to explain the brackets, and if by that point you're not convinced of like whether or not coming me should be higher or lower, I mean, how would you bring him higher? Is my question. Like we look to placements, then that gets hairy because <laughs> his first at Umabura Japan Major comparatively to third for Frozen, Frozen who outplaced the likes of Light, DeBuzz, Tweak, Sinji, Cosmo, Suarez, Mr. R, Wishes, uh, Mr. E, and Leon. I'm, I'm just at the 25th now. That's 10 people already ranked this season that he outplaced. Like, it just, it gets kind of maddening. You know, it's like, mm. holy wow. Like, the seasons are so different for each person, and the placements have so much stories behind them. So hopefully yeah. for Kamame's case, that sort of makes sense for more people. It makes more sense as we kind of like drive up the ranks here. 19th though, I mean, that's amazing. And I think for his case, uh, you know, a lot of emptiness for the American attendance there, 25th at Frostbite could have been the one, but unfortunately it's not, but this sets him up for a really great season too. And I see Kamame doing even more considering the fact that like Mega Man's still strong, Wario's still strong, and who knows if even Hero or Banjo or someone else works out for him, I don't know. Does he look like yeah. a Banjo player to you? No. Absolutely not, because Banjo's going to suck. And I don't think Kamaime plays characters that suck. Um, Try to make the Sheik work, but I don't know. I, I feel like the plus five really sort of... And that, and that puts him... respect that people have him. That puts him at what? That's 14th, 14, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so if he comes here for, let's say, a crew battle, I mean, Kamaime is not someone to sleep on. So no. uh, he is always dangerous. He always uses kind of like an uncanny mix of tricks, and he even pioneered a bunch. For a lot of characters. I mean, I, I, I personally didn't see, and it was probably Twitter clipped by a random that I didn't follow, but I mean, his second at Evo, dude, that was like, that was the yeah. talk of the week, you know, the talk of the month, the whole footstool and blade. So, congrats yeah. to Kamame, takes it for Japan so far. We're Japan, Japan, and 20 through 19. You ready to go to 18? Let's do it. All right, so uh, 18 here, we had uh, a name change involved, and we yeah. tried to highlight that for anyone that doesn't know. Uh, the person ranked at 18th uh, recently dedicated his tag um, to a new purpose. You can read about that on his Twitter. I'm not trying to bring anything up. But uh, for the most part, it's a really great homage. And Shoyo James, previously known as, is now Rivers. So congrats to Rivers. 18th, also a TO in Tri-State. So I think now, after uh, Umeki, who's in the mix for running all the Umaburas, I think Shoyo is the best rated TO in the entire world. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think anyone else leads a tournament. Um, yeah. But yeah, so so now we have a little bit of a difference here. Uh, three nines in a seventh, first, second, thirty third. Rivers, three K, USA, Tri State. Immediate thoughts. Uh, that consistency is nuts. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't one to get into the top eights, but getting ninth over and over, you know, it's heartbreaking for him. But I mean, just getting that far at three S tiers and, and locking in that spot is insane um the he's really the progenitor of crom he was the guy that sort of brought him into the you know public consciousness because i think a lot of people just immediately wrote off that character they're like oh that'll be yeah that'll i be remember awful. i remember uh rivers's uh mall setup footage remember he had yes. a lot of yep. labbing experience at the mall he got a lot of good hands-on experience and uh <laughs> he was showing i remember left right left right with crom and just narrowing donkey kong out of his existence existence but yeah go on yeah move just he moves so incredibly quick has the the down tilt tech chases are just unreal guy is so incredibly talented um mm -hmm. really happy to see him this high because i think james was always rivers now is was always one of those people that was sort of on the fringe um he sort of had these sparks where he would like sort of pop off but not really and then toward the end of smash 4 obviously he got top eight in that um in at super smash con if it wasn't the final one, it was the one before. I can't quite remember. And, and there the was also, one. like, a hand injury as well, you know? I mean, arthritis, yeah, that was another you know, thing. sucks to hear it. But now the Pro Controller, a little bit of uh, the advent there, changing the tides for him and allows him to play. So that's awesome, because I know he took a break and went inactive for a bit because of the, you know, chronic pain. So big yeah. ups to him. And uh, yep. so thankful for the accessibility. So 
13-9, uh, over 50%. I think at this point, the best way to interpret set counts is like, wow, if it's even at 50 or greater, that's really impressive considering everything. X Factor puts him at 17th in the minds of the panelists. Overall score, 75.3. Host of wins here, Coney. Tell us about them. Uh, it spreads the two pages. Uh, you have them on both sides. I remember when I first looked at this, I was like, wait, it says that he won. That must be a typo, idiots. Whoever made this video is an idiot. And I was yeah. like, oh, these are still wins. Yeah, so, uh, so quick context for uh, pretty much 21 through 50. Uh, we had this side of the card. The left side was strictly the wins. We just showed five, the best five that we could. Right side was the losses. Now that we're getting into the big boy club, the big player club, uh, now both sides are the wins and both sides are the losses. And some of these players, as you'll see later, they have double digits on both sides for their set count. So um, yeah. anyone you want to point out in particular? I mean, Cosmos, very impressive. It's a buzz, top 10. Um, ch 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 void top the wins 10. are amazing, uh, yeah. particularly on the twin Olimars. I think that's really impressive That because a lot of people can beat Myron, but they can't beat the buzz or vice versa. Um, because oh, they have very right. different oh, four play styles. Sets. Look at that. Wow, four even... sets over Olimar. And I know that that's a pretty favorable matchup for Krom, but still, I mean, you're talking about a potentially top five, maybe top ten in the world, and then another guy who's top uh top twenty at least. I don't remember if he's in the fifteen. Top fifteen. Yeah. Top fifteen, okay, yeah. Fifteenth. Uh very good. Um yeah, I mean like that's that's no easy feat. So to beat two top fifteen Olimar players on the planet and be flawless against them is super impressive. Um, but the, now the losses, they, though. The losses. So that Nairo stat is... Ugh, that's a bruise because you know it hurts him. And I've seen the sets. I've commentated the sets. They are close. So, so wait, having, wait, hold on, hold on. Hurts him stats-wise, hurts him mental-wise. Spe specify first. Both, I would imagine. I mean, like, getting one number on the board against Nairo, a top-10 player, I feel like that would be just huge for him in terms of ranking. Um, might even bring him up a spot or two? I don't know. But okay. mental-wise, for sure. Because you see that 0-4, and you know you're always getting close, but that Politana just keeps shutting you out. Um, mm. I, I could be wrong here, but I, I, I think I remember watching his set with Nairo and him being up 2-0 and then getting reverse swept. And it might have happened more than once. I don't know. Nairo is just very, very good. Explosive. Um, Clutch. Yeah. I mean, we could use any of the overused commentary terms that people like to throw out that Nairo embodies more than any other player, but Rivers... Um, just hasn't really figured out how to how to beat that demon just yet, and it sucks because you know they're from the same region. They're both from Tri-State, so yeah. Um, yeah. Super, su still super impressive to see Rivers is high. I have no doubt because um, I think a lot of people you'll see them and you'll be like, okay, this guy's definitely going up. Maybe this guy had a hot season, but he petered out at the end. I have no doubt that Rivers will. If he doesn't go up, I don't see him going down. I could see him in the top 20, no question, of the next one also. Um, just, I, I don't see Krom sort of falling out of favor as the game progresses, barring, like, I don't know, maybe he loses a jump in <laughs> 4.0. Like, Krom can only jump once now. Like, oh, okay, yeah, that's, and he's gone. Um, then I guess we're really switching to Diddy. But... Yeah, yeah, he's that's I, also that's also another that's on the thing table. too. Yeah, D Diddy was also featured by him. I know that Dakpo, uh, I think, is pioneering or has now completely pioneered the jungle jank combo, which I don't know its effectiveness, but I don't know if you've seen it. It's that Diddy Infinite with the banana oh, platform. Yep. Uh, Dyer's looking at him too. I know, yeah, that, so. that that's on the table. Who knows how this patch affects him? But something I do want to highlight: two things. One, uh, for this player card, Shoyo James side one. Uh, I want everyone to uh, take a look for a second. Ninth. Um, he tied with four other people for that placement at each of those events. And it really just goes to show if you're not in top eight, let alone if you don't win the tournament, people forget so yeah. quickly where you are on the whole power scale. Do you remember who got second at the CEO that anti won? Uh, Zenodo. Exactly. But like yeah. that is just so beyond like the recollection of so many people because it wasn't the winner it was like yes. anti's win and then even then i can't even name who got third or fourth but i don't know who got third <laughs> yeah i was gonna say boom and so like when it's a high profile event the highest of highest profile usually the top four top eight get recognition ninth as a whole never gets recognition but they were right there they were set away so that on top of the fact that he was zero four against Nairo. Now that's something that you mentioned earlier that it hurt him mentally. Of course, losing against the same player can be frustrating. It's like your demon, etc. 
Uh, stats wise, this starts to hurt less and less because as soon as you start giving losses to a person, uh, if that person is rated higher than you, then that's more or less expected. Losing four times to Naira is not as devastating as it would be losing four times to Captain L. That being because Captain L's expect like the expected win rate against someone like Shoyo is like very low comparatively, while Naira's is a little more in his favor. So something to keep in mind: uh, set counts again can be very deceiving. Uh, if you're one four against someone. That one win could have been at an S tier, while the other four yeah. could have been in region. So for Naira's case, just to make sure everybody's on the same page, um, when Shoyo was losing to Naira, he lost to him at Frostbite, heavy loss. Suplex City smashed twice, so now we're looking at a C tier. And he Not lost to him year. at Gommel, so Gommel's an A tier. So mm -hmm. an S tier okay. loss, two Cs, and an A uh, that pretty much was almost the whole alphabet at that point for the tiering system. <laughs> so again, just like more food for thought, more things to consider. Um, you know, again, we're trying each and every season to show these rankings as uh, not only transparently as possible, but also as intuitively as possible. So 18th goes to Rivers, free agent, by the way, and also the premier TO in Tri-State, you know, along with some of the other Tri-State buds. But 17th now. Yep. MVD. Um, thoughts. There he is. Yeah. Uh, thoughts and prayers. What do we think? I'm... So it's a weird thing, right? Because Talk before the rankings, before the rankings started, uh, MVD won the first major, even though it was not really a major. It was like a super regional. SPN um, said it was a major. It's a major. And fine, it's a major. Uh, it's don't park on the grass, and that was in Seattle. It was Let's not. See, who did he outplay? Don't park. Not crazy stacked. Uh, yeah, give me give me some names. I know he obviously outplaced Esam. Um, but yeah, so MVD won that, and I know a lot of eyes were on him at the start. And um, Snake too, which was like big, you know, and big Snake. news. Yes, yeah, Snake's super good. Um, and then you look at some of these placings. I mean, like he was known for consistently getting in the top eights. Uh, you can see the B tiers below. He has better placements than a lot of people at better events. Like I, I feel like in earlier cards, we're seeing lots of C's with, you know, fifths or sevenths or ninths. I mean, this dude got first, fourth. He's getting top eight in all these B tiers, and he's winning some of them. B, as you can say. B by the way, would not C, yeah. which is, of course, a little bit more of a win. So, continue. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's very impressive. Also, I could be wrong, but I feel like MVD is consistently a player who has a low X factor. Um... Like I, I feel like it's usually negative, and I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe oh, I'm a low I, X factor, meaning uh, like a negative, negative. X factor. Okay. I, I, I remember him distinctly having negative X factors. Oh, all the time. Game. Because in so, a sense, it's also popular to hate on the player MVD, uh, especially in the early points of Smash Four, because of like right. the whole lilac bit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Draws a lot of attention and not the most uh, positive way. Sure. So him having a positive X factor, good for him. Um, we're looking at the set counts, defeating Dark Wizzy 2-0, uh, actually getting a win on Dark Wizzy again this past weekend at Thunder Smash, although Wizzy did beat him, so that's going to be... Gonna and be and again, that was postseason, that's not season two. Yeah, 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 postseason, so that's not mm -hmm. in this. Um, I mean, I'm looking at the wins, and these are impressive, but you have to notice there is a What's pretty, the quality? What's the quality? Uh, there, there's a distinct... There's one top ten. Oops. And that top 10 is maybe a top 5, which Sammy? is Sam's. Okay, Sam, that's fair. Um, maybe a top 5. But other than that, uh, the top 10 wins just aren't here. Like, where's Cosmos? Where's Tweak, who is dropping sets to everybody? Where's, you know, DeBuzz? Where, and, and I've seen him get really close to beating those players. I commentated him against DeBuzz a couple times, and he didn't do it. Like, he got very close, but he didn't do it. So I think that that's sort of what hurts him more than anything. Does it hurt him enough to get 17th if he's not beating top 10? I don't know. I, I, that's the algorithm, and I don't, I don't make this. Um, but yeah, you can, you kind of can smell, you get a whiff of like gatekeeper here. Um, like if you're not top 10, he's really gonna mess you up. But if you are top 10, he's gonna have a tough time. He's still a challenge because, like I said, it's still going to, to, um, last hit, but. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the losses. I mean, 0-2 to Cosmos, 0-2 <clears throat> to, to the Buzz, 0-1 to Light, 0-2 to Mars. Yeah. He's getting to the top 10 consistently, but he doesn't have a win on any of them except uh, Samsora. And it's only one, so it's not like he got to him multiple times. Mm -hmm. And that win, to be very transparent, 
uh, for Samsara occurred at Frostbite. So uh, Frostbite, that was, like I said at the very beginning of this video presentation, uh, Frostbite was the, as it's pulling up right here, lowest rated S tier of the season. Worth almost half. Really? Worst, were you not here? I, I explained this very quickly at the beginning. Were you okay? I did. I, anyways, I, anyway, you're the student in the front of this. Pay attention. That low. So, twenty one hundred. Okay, if we switch this very quickly, um, just so everybody sees it. Okay, it's not it's not hocus pocus. I didn't change the algorithm on the way to this presentation. I didn't change anything. Frostbite right here on the screen. One thousand two hundred thirty nine points. Genesis six twenty one oh five. So you're talking about a dip of almost one k in points, meaning that the values, of course, are affected by that scale. The entrance, of course, being 1239 to the 2105. I mean, that we're, we're talking about, again, we're talking about scale here. So he beat Samsora at a low S tier, high A tier. Okay, where it's still an S tier. That's the standard. It was 1200 points. So with that context in mind, things start to piece together. Things start to maybe make sense for people who hadn't thought about it because, oh my gosh, MVD, all these wins. He's so good. He's so consistent. Consistent, yes. And he didn't give any sets away, at least we'll see here in a second. He didn't give them freely, and he didn't give them so much so that he was completely offset to the point where he wasn't even, like, making top 20. He was losing to the likes of Cosmos, top 10. Or, sorry, top 11. That's going to happen a lot because you said it. Uh, yeah. Cosmos, extremely high. Debuzz, top 10. Light, top 10. Mars, top 10. Myron, extremely high. Mr. E, a little bit on the lower side. Uh, Nairo top 10, Salem top 25, and Yeti on the lower side. Two sets to Yeti. So now you can sort of see, like you said earlier before, the gatekeeper esque persona. He got one win that he clipped from a top 10 player, and then he only is losing to the best. So if he's not beating the top, but only losing to the best, then that puts him, at least from what we see here, on that lower side. X Factor put him at 15. I know as a goal he wanted top 15. Many people want the even number, you know, top 20 or like the top 15, top 10s, top 5. Uh, you hate to see it, but to, to go beyond what this sort of shows here, like, yes, his lowest placement was 17th on the card. I think, like, overall that was his lowest placement too. Um, yeah, 17th was his lowest placement CEO. Uh, getting 17th does not, like, in the grand scheme of everybody, that doesn't, like, <laughs> if, you, if your lowest placement is 17th, that doesn't mean that you're going to be 17th or above. Uh, you tied with 17th with four other people, just like you tie uh, for 13th with four other people and 9th with four other people. And with three other people. Three, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. Four total, because it's one, two, three, four, five, five, seven, seven, nine, 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 thirteen, et cetera. I did, I did the same thing at, at yeah. Thunder this past weekend. That's exactly. Fine. So, <laughs> context. Adding more. Unfair? I don't know. But at the same time, like, he, in my opinion, looks to be right where the data fits him. And the panel thought he should have been too above. But again, with the best win being Sam Sora, like, it almost, like, confirms it that, you know, that this is kind of where it all goes. 13-16, uh, you know, near 50% set count rate. Very impressive. Um... But again, Dark Wizzy being outside of the top 20, Esam being in the top 20, Goblin being outside, Leia outside, Mides outside, and so on and so forth. So for MVD, regardless, I mean, he's pissed. And that's going to motivate him to Season 2, I believe. Um, it'll be crazy. And I think that with his snake getting like even just better, like as we see it, I mean, he just won the Invitational, Thunder Smash 2. Uh, we'll see where he goes for Evo. Snake is not an easy matchup by any means. And... I think pretty much on top of like having brawl experience, like that's like the only thing people have right now. Uh, Cause let's see who did well against him. So Cosmos, does he have brawl experience? Cosmos? He's very um, young. So I don't know if he had brawl experience. Yeah, proper. I think he was a Wi-Fi kid. Okay. I could be wrong. The buzz, um, of course, light, maybe not. Mars does, Mr. E does, Myron does, right? He comes from ball. Naro obviously does, Salem does, and Yeti, I think he also does. So that's interesting. Cause like, I don't see any like new, new, newcomers, right? Really taking a set up MBD. I also don't see it happening against a top-rated snake. So that's a that's an interesting observation. I think Light came in with Smash Four, um, yeah. but I think he's the only one that like 
and I, I also with the matchup, you know, you got reflector and speed, a lot of stuff going. Mm, yeah, and I mean, like Fox was, I don't know, I feel like Fox was much better at juggling people early on. Um, I, if Fox has kind of fallen out of meta for a couple different reasons. I mean, maybe it's just light not performing as well as we expect. Um, but yeah, it, that's a good observation that a lot of these players really, I, I, I think either they know Snake already when they came into the game, or they are just lab monsters you know what i mean like they'll figure it out over time Mm -hmm. um that's just my perception though uh but yeah that's a that's an interesting point i think mvd will continue to be consistent obviously he just won thunder smash this past weekend didn't count for rankings but put four thousand dollars thunder smash did so thunder smash did count for rankings no i mean for not for this one oh true yeah so this all ended july 7th by the way also if you're tuning in and you think this is like up to date in terms of like current current a live ranking this is like from the beginning of february until the 7th of july so everything past 7th of july is not in here recency bias is always really hard to work against because of course people are competing after uh the season ends in the real it's in the middle of the reveal so dark wizzy for instance like i imagine if he wasn't pgr'd for whatever reason this past invitational would have been a huge blow up but he was you know thankfully and it kind of like aligns with what people think. I mean, the guy's crazy. The guy with Mario, only one doing it with Mario's popping off. So 17th yeah. to MVD. Um, earlier 31st was Dark Wizzy <clears throat> just mentioning him. But 16th now, the old bud, the old faithful, it's MVD, Esim. Yeah, he told, they, <laughs> we were talking at Thunder Smash and he told me that they were together. I was like, that is, that is precious. For anybody that doesn't know, Sam and MVD are best friends for a very long time. They team together at everything, so mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that is that is precious. Um, look at this stark contrast, though. If you, it, it's so funny if you yeah. look at like the first player cards of so many people, you get such a wide, sort of disparate set of numbers. Um, 65th at Frostbite is a is a real punch in the gut. That's that's bad, mm-hmm. but um, like you said, that that counted what second least. If I'm not mistaken, like Frostbite that's... was the least rated S tier, which is still you don't want that. You don't want a 65th, but uh, we're gonna see if later. You had the win 65th side. at one of them, then 65th is that's the one that you want. Yeah, so so a lot of the arguments here is first side MVD, first side versus ECM. Lowest placing for MVD was 17th. Lowest placing are 65th, then a 33rd and a 25th. Uh, mm-hmm. Largely now almost like bottom bottoming out, like you know, c- comparatively when you start to look at the placements. But again. What happened behind those placements? What did Esam do? What netted him 16th? And in this case, what put him above someone who is, you know, Mr. Consistent, Mr. You know, doesn't get under 17. So first at Battle BC3, that was a B tier. Second at uh, Nimbus, uh, Dreamhack Dallas, third of course, and get him a level third. Dreamhack Dallas, by the way, B tier. Full Bloom 5 4th, Combo Breaker 5th. So, again, these aren't all in the player cards, but he also, Esam, is notorious for hunting B and C tiers. X Factor of Zero. This is <laughs> one of the six in the entire PGR. Only six people out of 50 got a zero X Factor, meaning the panel placed them exactly where the ranking algorithm did. 16th in their minds, 16 here. Positive set count, 16 15, and now these wins. Cosmos top 10, traded a set with him. MK Leo, top one, got a set from him. Mr. R traded, okay? But, for Mr. R's case, again, strong player, but weaker on the ranking side. Nairo, top 10. Salem, again, top 25. Stroder, on the weaker side. And Tweak, top 10, top five, etc. And Yeti, very respectable, also in the middle. Differences. Yeah, so if you're, if you're looking at this, you have one, two, three, four, for four wins on top 10 players or top 11 in Cosmos's place. Not top 15, not top 20, top 10. That's top 10, yeah. And top. we were just talking about on MVD's side, he had one. Sam. That's a big, that, that's, and, and that's just, and, and you have to imagine that Leo and Tweak are top three. It could be, I don't know with the algorithm, but I mean, like, that's bigger. Like, as you go up, the 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 sort of weight is exponential you know yeah Um, and and having a win on the best player in the game is is no small feat yeah yeah and to 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 
uh address earlier cosmos in the chat saying i'm confused as to how i'm not he's not top 10 because i keep calling him top 10 that is your fault coney because you called him top 10 first I, well, I, he's like 10.1 so, i know i know so cosmos we'll of course later talk in the reveal but now we're seeing it so esim over md the placement 65th how can you hope to be a top 20 player with a 65th placement again who he lost to at that event if we're looking um at esam's uh frostbite was it at frostbite he lost to Luis, dollar sign, uh, and Shoyo James. So, unranked loss, pretty devastating. Uh, really highly ranked loss. Again, who are you losing to? Who are you outplacing? Um, it doesn't mean that, like, when you get 65th, I think what people think is, like, when you get 65th, it's, like, top 64 all got a win on you. Like, that's not, <laughs> that's not what happened. Like, he lost to Luis, he lost to Shoyo James. Like, Luis is a pretty respectable loss. Shoyo James, an impeccable loss. Um... So that was his 65th story. What was the other one? He got 33rd at Prime Saga. So at Prime Saga, who's he losing to? He lost to Schroeder, ranked, then unranked. So again, ranked player, unranked player. He didn't just go 0 and 2, 0 and 2 in pools. And then Pound, where he got 25th. He lost to uh, Ling Ling, New England Peach, and Mutace. Again, mm -hmm. Premier Florida Peach. So at all those events where he, quote, bustered out and had his ranking tank and he got double digit high placements. He was losing to an unranked player and a ranked player, which, I mean, you start to split hairs at that point, and then you start to see, like, oh, like, the quality of these losses aren't half bad, and also, like, that could have happened at 25th or 33rd or sometimes even 17th, you know? Yeah. Because if in a world at Pound where Esam lost early to Ling Ling and then ran into Mutis, Mutis for 9th, it would still be a 9th placement with a loss to Ling Ling and a loss to Mutis. So for probably the seventh time today, context matters. Esam did it. Uh, we look at his losses. Like as a, like I was saying earlier, the unranked losses won't be here, but like that kind of highlights like again, like how it sort of tanked. But light top ten, Mars top ten, Mudes in the middle, MBD right below him, Pape in the middle, Shoyo right below him, Void top ten. So. Esam, by and large, like, in his mind and as his brand, I mean, he's, like, always been, even in Smash 4, I mean, I remember at one point when he was even on the list of, like, the players to beat Zero, if you remember that arc. Yep. Um, yep. He's, like, one of those really consistent top players. Esam doesn't get upset, but he does. Mm -hmm. But Esam also goes really far in bracket, and he also beats, like, plenty of players. And, like, wins on Tweak and Leo, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, to me, that, that, that starts to make sense after you read his entire profile, personally. Sure. I am a... <sighs> yep. Good on that. It's 15th. What do you think? Yep. Uh, let's go on to 15. And uh, I feel like we've spent, we've already gone, well, I guess it was only 40. I don't know when we started. Um, but we've gone a long time talking about each player. I'm going to be relatively silent on this one because while the kid's amazing, very impressive, super good. Is he Japanese? Again, I, I, I don't follow the results too much outside of, you know, the super, the oh majors God. over here. I don't, if you look at the things. But I will talk about some of the wins and losses because I think there's an interesting point to be made there. But you have T here, 13th at Frostbite. Again, lowest 15th. placing here. Fi 15th. Number 15th, T. Which, by yes. the way, we have two Ts on the PGR. It's not Taya, it's T. So T, the link player, single letter, and T, like the drink. Like the drink. Um, yeah, I, I, I said uh, 13th at Frostbite. So, yeah, 13th <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. at Frostbite. 15th uh, on the rank, was, 13th at Frostbite. Go on. Which was the lowest uh, lowest S tier, so it didn't hurt him too much. 5th at Umabura Major. Japan Major, yeah. And 5th uh, at Prime Saga. A lot of B and C tiers, obviously, too. Um, mm -hmm. But if you look at the wins, good God. I mean, this is always where it comes down to, right? You've got sniper, sniper. Like in the truest yeah. sense, T is a sniper. But go on. Yeah, you've got so you've got two for Debuzz, one for Mars, and one for Tweak. Again, that's five top ten wins. And again, some of those guys are top five. I don't want to say which ones, but a, a couple of those dudes are top five, no question. Um, it's when you look at the other side, at the losses, where I think things sort of sting a little bit more. He does have a win on Shutone, but one in four is a big ouch. That's the uh, Shoyo Nairo situation we got. Yeah, yeah, I think if he if he took another one of those sets, or maybe a couple more or something An like that. An X-Factor put him at 13th, dude. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's kind of what... Like, imagine the level of respect you've got to 
have and the prestige that you have to have to be a considered like 13th for a Pac-Man. Yeah, exactly. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, no Jesus. one's calling gimmicks. No one's calling bracket luck. No one's even calling matchup inexperience. It's like, T, I think, is one of the players that definitely, if you've been asleep on Japan, such as yourself, might come as a total surprise. He did, however, have... Uh, what we called earlier, like that, you know, American attendance of Prime Saga and sure. Frostbite. So those are like the quick, like, you know, stream clips that people are like, whoa, this Pac-Man, whoa, this Pac-Man from Japan. Uh, obviously, he didn't get the same treatment that Sue did against Zero and Frostbite 2017 with like the whole fanfare of all that Grand Finals. Um, but he accumulated a great variety of wins. And like you were starting to say earlier, I mean, it's a buzz, Mars, and Tweak. And two on the buzz, not even just one. Like, pure insanity, pure greatness for T. That's not easy to do, by the way, beating the buzz twice. You can you can sometimes beat the buzz once, but beating him twice is a big deal. Because he's like, he was saying this weekend at Thunder Smash, he's like Batman. Like, he, if he loses, he'll probably win the next time. But no, he, he beat him two times. That's very impressive. Yeah, and then his worst loss here, worst loss being said loosely and just based on the rankings, is, it, it seems to be, what, Wishes at 21? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's losing to Common May, of course. Uh, Nairo, Shoe Tone, those four times like Kony mentioned earlier, Wishes, and Zachary. I mean, T only went and lost to the top. Whereas Esam went and lost to the top and the mid range. T yes. only lost to the top. So 15 for him. Congratulations. Um, not much to say. I mean, he was just like throwing through like very sharp attendance and a very sharp signal, which even then the panelists put him at plus two without even potentially knowing all these results. Um, so yeah, 15th goes to T, 14th now though. Uh, 14th, let me kick it over to that. Yeah, so uh, actually leaked by the city of Paris itself. What is happening? Um, I don't know how they got that. Um, did, we should tag them, we, shout outs to Paris, bro. Like, d Did you reach out to the players and let them know their rank? So no, for like, for like no. sponsors? So I how did, did not reach know? out to the... I don't know, and I'm kind of <laughs> confused as to how that all started. Uh, I think Paris just tweeted, like, the city of... For anyone that doesn't know, the, the city of Paris, the actual Twitter account for the city of Paris in France, okay? Not any other Paris. Not, like, you know, how Georgia's and... Uh, anyways, but um, they tweeted out that congratulations to Lutoni making top 15 in the world uh super smash brothers are loosely translated like they were regarding him as top 15 in the world not top 10 not best in france not best in europe but specifically and very pointedly top 15 so yes. i mean i don't know who i gotta fire whoever leaked to the city of paris i i'm just beside <laughs> myself because tony like yeah congratulations but it got spoiled like you're starting to say though i mean placement wise this is looking clean and it did not feature the summit um, the ultimate summit yeah. is not a part of the rankings. Interesting, interesting contention. Again, trialing at this period. Wizzy's obviously benefiting. Tony did not get to benefit. Retroactively, should we have? Would we have? I mean, we're taking a little bit of a more prudent approach. Trying it now in the second season, we'll see how it stands. But not talking about invitational summit, Glutoni. I mean, wow, this card. Finishing up with Albion too for the recency bias definitely helps. Yeah. Um, I mean, the big win on Albion is a big deal just because it's sort of defending the territory, you know what I mean? It's the European major. Um, super impressive there. I thought that the 17th at Genesis would hurt him more than this, uh, but I'm not sure who he lost to at Genesis off the top of my head. Well, let's take a look. Uh, I mean, Genesis his, uh... 6, he lost to... I'm Hep and Tweak. So, ah, okay. tweak amazing. I'm hip mid range. No offense, I have just unranked. Okay, don't 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 clip me. I'm hip, but <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, pretty. If you could lose to Leo or Tweak at a tournament, then you probably should. Speaking yeah. speaking semi tongue in, like tongue in cheek, but like he didn't go like zero and two. You know what I mean at Genesis. Yeah. So seventeenth could have been ninth. Could have been seventh. Okay. Uh, if I'm hip made it far farther. 13 and 7, though. That is a hot set count. That is very impressive, especially when you look at... So, I mean, we talked about the wins, um, you know, sort of taking up two slots. But the losses, he's only got four players on there, which sort of suggests that he's running into the, the these people a lot, obviously. Seems to have an issue with Olimar. Uh, DeBuzz, he's 1 and 3 with. Shuton, he's 1 and 2. 
Not sure what the answer is there. Um, he obviously can take sets off those players, but I'm sure it's got to be exhausting. Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like if you look at that and then you look at the other side, he's only playing these guys one time. Uh, apparently he played Prodigy twice, but everybody else, he's only got one set on. Mm -hmm. He's running into these guys on the other side often to buzz and shoot on. So kind of gate kept by those two. Um, and then but, but obviously, not the set, which was so important. To buzz, right. shoot tone, yes. top 10 wins. Um, not and not then, zero four like uh, like the Rivers Nairo situation, and and, and also a big deal. And also that helps if you lose a lot against a top person and also get a set. I mean that's also very valuable because you're not expected to win. So that's like quote unquote the upset right. um, that's valued out of that. Which I mean I can't like necessarily say like an algorithm that's like a specific category tab thing, but like it's it also affects like your mental perception like remember when leo was 0 and 12 against uh zero <laughs> at 2 ggc yeah. and then he won 112 i mean that affects everything it's like dude this yeah. guy was losing he's getting slapped up by this diddy like just just call it in it's over at that boat yeah. he wins it wins the whole thing so with tony i mean congratulations dude top 15 i think from his twitter reaction looking like he wanted to be top 10 set his sights for top 10 i think he tweeted like a very uh what's the word a very diplomatic like thanks everybody <laughs> thanks to my supporters and then he quote retweeted himself and then he's like okay real tweet and he's like okay i'm gonna get these guys i'm actually gonna blah 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 and i was like okay <laughs> pop off with tony like pop off um, I, I think it's uh it's kind of interesting to see everybody's sort of reaction you've so, you have a lot of the just like happy to be here guys but as you get higher up it's like Son of a bitch! I want a top ten. The anime, the time. anime be begins. The anime yeah, they begins. really get into it. So dude, forty-one um, through fifty, dude. Oh my god! They tag their mom. They tag their oh, yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. They tag their local like police department, city, and school. And they're like, dude, so happy to be forty seventh. Like, I just want to say, <laughs> yeah, these guys don't want that. No, no, they want to take off the second digit. Plutonia wants to just be first, not fourteenth. It's ugly. So yeah. Congrats to him, and now on to lucky number 13. Um, I mean, still, you know what's crazy, though? It's like, just saying, all right? Tony carrying Europe, not the same story previous game. That was clearly Mr. R himself. Yeah, that's true. So, who knows? Is this set, like, you know, Mr. R living in Cali right now, on and off? Um, what's going to happen? You know, does Tony live at the Sky House? We'll see. So, yeah. 13th though, we're talking about them on our last three here. We have the very uh, popular desync grabber himself, Myron. Uh, yeah, so this one's weird. Um, just tell. because the placings are just all over the place. Uh, almost like a like a Salem Jr. Um, <laughs> obviously, obviously placing much better than Salem this season. I don't mean to disrespect. Uh, he had he had some incredible runs that I think everybody remembers, but he's also like the first player to pop into your head when you think of that red bubble on the PG stats. Like this is the guy. Red dot, blue dot, bro. <laughs> this is Mr. Red Dot because he'll lose sort of crazy sets that you wouldn't expect him to. And I think I think that has to be. Well, I mean, you're the guy, so you could tell me, but I think that has to be what held him back here, because, like, oh, third yeah. at Frostbite is huge, second at Pound is huge, almost got top eight at Genesis. That, like, this also, dude... Uh, insane. And top 16 at Momocon, like... Yeah. Nine he, he did amazing, but I, I feel like those losses, I don't know if he lost to... Well, I'm looking at the losses now. Some of them are unranked. Some of them are way down. Um, those hurt a lot, and uh, one recurring loss that he had was uh zero three to mk leo and i get it leo best player in the world he's unstoppable a lot of people. but if you could have got that one if you could have got the one win could you imagine you you might be top 10 i don't know if it if he would have got the one win on leo and then gotten like fifth at genesis that might have been an i don't know but Oof. that would have been huge like so so negative seven dude like negative seven man like the, the oh, disrespect tough. in a top 20 top 20 by the way for everyone tuning in for the first time pg stats round table top 20 through one, uh, 11 uh, for the PGRU. Historically speaking, people in top 20, uh, everyone is, how do I say this, by and large okay with it, uh, indicated by an X factor that's usually single digit and either positive or negative three at the most, okay? Mm -hmm. Like if you're 20th, usually it's a positive X factor because people want you with your boys in top 15. 
Uh, if you're down in the teens, sometimes it's positive to get you into top 10 or negative to like push you more towards like 16, 17. Myron got pushed to 20th, okay? Out of the top 15 into 20th. Uh, examining the wins, like you said though, Light, top 10. Mars, top 10. Uh, Samsora, top 10, traded a set. That's three. On the losses side though, um, did he trade any? I just can't remember. There's so many uh, sets. He's traded with Fatality, one set each. Well, um, top 10 though. like Or not top 10, no. That was it. No, no top 10 wins. Yeah. 15 17 uh, though, which is pretty even even, even Stevens. Sure, it's not bad at all, and I, I think that the X factor could largely be attributed by the recency of it. If mm -hmm. he got, if he did stronger later in the season when the when the survey was being taken, I think that would have been uh, flipped a little bit. But you know, starting off strong and then kind of puttering out later on, and and I feel like a part of that might have been the Olimar nerf. I don't know. Well, um, uh, to be fair and square, uh, Myron has been on record as saying the Olimar nerf was beyond detrimental to the character. Right. Uh, his yeah. results also reflected somewhat of a dip or just a dip or nosedive. All right, he tanked since the patch, if I'm going to be transparent. <laughs> uh, he owns that. He says it. He says there's multiple issues with the shield. And so he's definitely one of those people, I think, that... Uh, Particularly in Smash, Twitterverse, the Twitter meta, if you complain about something, then people will seek to sort of undercut you for anything that you do thereafter. Um, or if you just complain about it in a way that's disparaging, like Mars does about ZSS, then anything you do is almost magnified by a supposed non-top 10 character. Right. Um, so there's ways to do things and ways to do things, but by and large, Myron is definitely at the head of the pack, uh, saying, you know, along with the buzz, you know, more so, uh, Olimar nerfs are nasty. These are not good. Nintendo, please fix this. Which then affects public perception. Oh, that guy's carry because now his character doesn't do what it was doing before. And then this is my X factor of negative seven. So yeah. can't really control against that. I mean, his results speak for themselves uh, all over the place, some would say, but insanely, insanely high peaks. And uh, for the come to Papa 65th, Sam Sora and E King. So, geez, dude, like Sam Sora, like. Mm. That that yeah. that's a showstopper. So yep. uh, CEO, on the other hand, you know, got more technical. Spargo, up and coming cloud. Okay, a lot of people even just wanted him on this PGR already, based off a of local with Void. Yeah, and then I Fatality, which is like, dude, Fatality. Like, I feel he could just like pop up on whoever, whenever. So Spargo and Fatality, not the worst. That's a CEO, uh, 49th though, and then Smash and Splash to top it off at the S tiers. Um, Mystery and Scat. So it's like. Hella yeah. respectable, dude. Hella respectable. So and let's keep in mind that Fatality also has been known to sort of historically mess up Olimar's. Um, he's had a few really high profile sets with the buzz. So he has a real understanding of how to beat the character. So I, I think taking that Fatality loss is, is like to have that win on Fatality is kind of a big deal with that character, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, before we talked about Duck Hunt, you know, I feel like should be able to beat Falcon, but I think that Olimar. While he beats him on paper, I think in practice with a player like Fatality with so much experience, obviously the character has changed from Smash 4, but I mm -hmm. think it's different. Um, but yeah, very impressive card here from Myron. The minus 7 is a bit disrespectful, but you know, that's that's probably a recency bias thing. It, it's whole season, it's patch talk, it's oh, yeah. Omar being, be, being like high key, being unpopular as a character. Yes, that too. Um, a lot of the sentiment from the community revolved around hating Olimar, so... Uh, similar to Palutena, if you play Palutena, you are you got a double-digit negative X-Factor, unless you're Nairo. Um, so, I mean, you know, you take what you can get. Uh, yep. X-Factor does not affect the rankings, it's just a little flare. So, for Myron's case, completely separate from his data, 15-17 is wins and losses, as you see there. Um, and we're going to move into 12, as we have our last two for the night. Thanks for tuning in. Top 20 through 11 on the PGRU, brought to you by PG Stats. Coney and I here... Uh, making sense of things. Is it, you, you feel more comfortable, Connie. Does it make more sense? Does it make... Does it... At, at times. No. Uh, we haven't gotten to the big bombshell, which I'm sure will be the point of discussion for a lot of the Q&A. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm, I do not purport to be a data guy, an analyst guy, so I am at the, at the whims of the algorithm, just like everybody else. Um, I, <laughs> I'm not, I mean, like, I'm, I'm very much just... I see the rankings, I say, oh, that's a little weird, but okay. Or, okay, that makes sense. Okay, you know, I'm not... I just ask 
some questions, but generally I, I trust in the in the process. It's so. fine. It helps to have that guy in the room pointing a gun at you while you say this. So uh, anyway, <laughs> Zach Ray at 12th. Uh, Tony, intensely familiar with Japan. Uh, this is this this. So okay, Brit. So the whole uh, proto Banham, what many would call hate that you have, or not even hate, but disrespect. Oh, right. um, can you tell us what is to be a Zach Ray? Because uh, sure. we didn't necessarily have this in Smash Four. I think Leo like started as like whoa. And then he did the whole thing at Smash Factor, slapped Mr. R, then people said, Mr. R, you just got second at Evo, what are you doing? And then Vinny went, and then the cat went, and they're like, oh, wait. And then MKLeo came here. Wrong right. story. So it was like not as like started as like a god. Like his feet touched the floor, okay? He didn't use a pro controller, he used GameCube, he also had some brawl history. But Zachary, what does it mean to be a Zachary right now? So here's the thing. Um, I, I think that... A lot of players, maybe not a lot of, obviously not a lot of players, because if there's a lot of players, it wouldn't be as big of a deal. But I think that you see you, what we saw with Zero, or with Leo, where this dude is, you know, 13 years old and beating everybody, and he's super talented, and everybody's talking about it, and there's all this buzz. He's the new prodigy. He's amazing. Um, everybody was talking about him, right? Everybody wants to do that for the next big thing. Zach Ray was that next big thing. When he was going into Genesis, everybody said he might be the best player on the planet. Has <laughs> on very, the planet! You dude. remember that? You remember that? That's on what everybody the was saying. Planet. They like, said he might be the best player. And it's sort of reminiscent... He coded the game. It, it's sort of reminiscent of uh, 9B, QB, back in Brawl. Everybody said he was co going to come over, take over everything with Ices. Nobody was going to touch him. But he also has the bonus, the benefit of being very young. So everybody wants to say, oh, he's the prodigy. He's just so talented. Um, came over here, got fifth at Genesis, did an amazing job, not bad at all. Went uh, got, beat Light for I think the Summit spot, if I'm not mistaken, and um, and just like slapped him on stream without even yeah, wearing headphones, not dude. Not so even wearing headphones. Yeah, so Zach Ray sort of had this this reputation of he's gonna blow up the earth. Um, long story short, he did not. Not to say that he wasn't incredible, but he's not instant top three, top five, like a lot of people were saying. And uh, that was sort of my contention with Proto Bantam, because I think that he is the new sort of hotness. There's that there's that episode of South Park where everybody like is on to Britney Spears, and then they show Miley Cyrus, and she's the new one that they're all going to you know sort of take into their cult and worship, whatever, and like drive to madness. I feel like... We're kind of okay with Zach Ray being like a top fifteen, top twenty. He's he's amazing. He's god tier, but he's not gonna kill everybody and get top three at everything. Now those, <laughs> all of those projections are on uh, Proto Bantam for a lot of people, and they go a little bit too far. Yeah, um, Hbox even quoted saying is uh, I think top three or at lowest top eight for Evo. This yeah, we've seen so it from like, Japan, which I mean, bro, like again, amazing player, but I don't think that's gonna happen. But to get back to the point of Zachary, that is the amount of hype that was surrounding this kid. Um, and his feet didn't touch the ground, which... It, it wins a ton of stuff at his locals, has switched over to Pokemon Trainer. I don't know exclusively. I think he's still using Wolf, but he just kind of plays what he wants. All over, dude. All yeah. over. Doesn't, um, doesn't really come to that much in the U.S., but we see what he's capable of. Um, Damn, insanely young. I believe he's 15, maybe 16. It's hard to confirm like with that. some Japanese players, but uh, travel, you know, new to, to Zachary. I know that he played Corrin um, in the previous Smash and then now traveling with like Game With, his team. Uh, you know, I think he is going to Evo. I think that's been confirmed. Um, yeah. But yeah, Zachary is, is one of those stories of like, I think. The crazy part is one, he's young, and two, like his confidence was just so weird. Like he plays like an amiibo. Yeah. Like, yes. like yeah. he doesn't falter. He doesn't like he no. He's the definition of no wasted movement. Like no right. empty hops. No left, right, left, right. You know what I mean? Like he just. Yep. I'm here, and I'm gonna destroy you. So seven, seven people place him in top ten, which. Yep. I mean that's that's pretty pretty agreeable. I think light top ten win, shoe tone type ten win, uh, void he traded with. Uh, to Buzz, uh, that's four top 10 wins. And then, of course, like when he was in Japan or elsewhere, I mean, he was getting all these other impressive hosts of names. Yeah. Um, I think it's crazy because, like, he was the wolf main to watch, but 
I mean, since then, the Rob, the Pokemon trainer, the Lucina, the Joker. I know that he went. I know Jetty for sure, or it might have been Tetra. They posted a results graphic for um, one of the Sumabatos or a local in Japan, and he won solo Joker. So I know that he's done it. I know that Sue has gotten close or also done it. Again, we don't keep track of local results. Um, so we'll see if he becomes the Joker main to like counter Leo with like Joker versus Joker. Or maybe he takes the hero. I don't even know. Or maybe this patch destroys Joker or destroys <laughs> Wolf. I mean, what we will see is that as the top 10 starts progressing, again, we always see uh, how many people play what characters. Having that secondary and tertiary is more important than ever. So big ups to Zachary. Yeah. Um, it's kind of interesting because if you look back at all the other top 50 you know, characters, there aren't that many Wolves. And uh, for a character that a lot of people yep, like yep, sort yep, of yep. to be top tier, Zachary is one of the only I, I don't I think that's many, the only wolf. Is he the only one? Because like everybody is undisputed that this character is amazing, but Zachary might be the only one. I don't want to disrespect anybody, but I think he's the only guy on here. And he's not even playing the character as much anymore. He's playing other characters, so Yeah, you know, wolves right now, like Larry, Seagull Joe come to mind. Uh in the East, I don't I don't really recall too many. I mean, but, like, I feel like Zach Ray, if he drops Wolf, we could potentially have a top tier with no representation on the next PGR, you know? So, I, I, that's crazy to me. I feel, because I, again, I'm, I'm very much a kind of an inkling sort of doubter, but it's funny because the inkling is higher, not that much higher, as we'll see in a second, but there were, you know just as many inklings on the thing so yeah um, touting wolf is like top five in the game was really just like i don't know how to deal with down smash slash it can be laser ledge yeah 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 um, but good stuff to zachary very impressive um i'm interested to see how he does without everybody's eyes on him like i said i i feel like i i don't like it when the whole world attaches to one player and is like oh my god i can't wait to see what this guy does because he's, he's gonna beat one. everybody yeah yeah i don't i don't because i feel like that one, it doesn't do anything because, like, then you just it it's creating all this hype for no reason. And two, I think it puts a lot of unnecessary um, pressure on that player to perform. I think it's the same thing as the sponsor curse that a lot of people have, where as soon as you get a sponsor, you underperform at the next major. Mm -hmm. um, I hope he continues doing well because I really love seeing him play and I love his play style. And I can't wait to see how he does at Evo. I'm really excited. Yeah, I can't wait to see how he does either. I think he's in that Venn part of the Venn diagram that's actually exceptionally dangerous in terms of bias. Is like he's young, and he's from Japan, so it's yeah. like boosh. Yep. Like Leo's like <laughs> only a couple years older, but like yep. Leo's already just like he's on the Mount Rushmore of Smash Ultimate. He's like, you know, he's there day one, one of the founding fathers, etc. And like everyone just already accepts Leo and not, not takes for granted, but like he's just already kind of you know coming to his own. Zachary seen as like the prodigy so congrats to him number 11th though probably the talk of the night the talk of the list um oh. pan of global zone uh inkling main extraordinaire the only other inkling aside from abadango i believe um to make it on 11. now tell us the story of cosmos because i think his ultimate one was uh largely frustrating but always in the spotlight like what do we mean by that yeah so so just to give a little bit of background clarity also because i think that you got to go all the way back to the beginning so in smash 4 cosmos was very much a wi-fi warrior uh respected by a lot of people he was a naifu uh would compete in the online tournaments and everybody knew he was good but he never get out, got out to anything right mm -hmm. so then uh some and I, I might be doing this out of sequence but i don't care all these things happened um eventually these PG tournaments started coming up, key to the PG house, and he would go online and win those, and he would get a ticket to events, and they would get him out there. So, like, uh, I think Big House was one of them, and then there was another one that I can't remember. But point is, everybody's like, wow, this kid's good, and not just on Wi-Fi. Like, he's not just a Wi-Fi guy. And people are kind of doubting him every step of the way. Then uh, he becomes fast friends with the Loft kids. Um... I guess the there cat, are kids out there, Falls, Mr. R, etc. Yeah, the Jersey the boys loft, go out of the Midwest. All the Loft dudes. Sylvanas, so he goes to the yeah. Midwest uh, makes a hard dedication to be amazing at Ultimate, grind it out, be the best Inkling player, um, and really super tryhards of the game. Cares about it more than anything. Game is life. Um, and I think if you look at this player card... Just in a vacuum. In a vacuum, please. Dyson. In a vacuum, it looks incredible. 
Like, I, I think a lot of people were expecting him to be top 10. I think a lot of people still consider him to be top 10 in their minds. Um, but I, 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 like, it's still, it, 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 it's, it's an illusion. Like, this is a trick of the eye that this, this, is, this that is, he's number 11. This is, this is PG bias, man. You guys are pu- pushing him down a spot. Yeah. So, everything that Cody said is true. I mean, he is, this is more or less the rags to riches. Um, I mean, really just coming from the fact that he was a Wi-Fi warrior. He did not start as a star. He ended as a star in Smash 4. He continues to be a star today. He made top 10, I think, on the last PGR. He got like 8th or ninth. Of course, the zero-less PGR, a very frustrating meta PGR, the last Smash 4 PGR. So... Um, I don't think people really gave that its its its, it's uh, associated hype, but regardless, Cosmos did that. Now, of course, Ultimate's here, Inkling's here, and yeah, he did secure a lot of those top eights. Now, as we've learned, the name of the game is uh, placements have a whole different story after you, after you open that cover. And for Cosmos, that was also the case. Um, expand Gong 4, he got first, so that's just, again, undeniable. Uh, second at Boom Boo 5. Third at the crown, fourth at the Japan major, which was insane. We're also looking at a yeah, positive set big. count here, uh, which does not happen typically. And also fifth at Frostbite, that's collision that was really important. He got seventh, and then here it comes. Genesis six, a seventh, Gamo, a seventh, Umabora SP3, a seventh, an A tier, CO ninth, Momocon 13, Smash and Splash 13. Now the wins. What did he do? What did? How did he get to that point in the bracket, and who did he lose to? So, to Buzz, Esam, Leia, the whole thing that you see here. Out of this, how many are top ten? The Buzz. Yeah. Nairo. Well, light. Light. That's on the lo- light, yeah. on the loser side, so three top ten wins on the loser side. In case he he traded, just making sure. Um, so, okay, Mars for one. Mars is another, and he didn't get on anybody else. Not even Tweak, not even Sim. So four top ten wins, okay? Chat, as it was being memed earlier, Stuart was saying, uh, Cosmos is 8-12 with the top 20. Very very acceptable, over 50%, but he's 4-8 and eight with the top 10. So, yeah. so listen, if we're going to talk about who deserves what and who belongs where, if you're 4-8 against the top 10, is that... Does that sound like an 8th? Does that sound like a 7th? Or does it sound like a 10th? Or then in this case, like an 11th? I mean, that's unfortunately, like, I think what starts to, like, take away from the placements in people's minds. But, like, what to then, what are you awarding? Like, the fact that he got single digit, but, like, how did he get there? Who did he beat? Or the fact that this is what he came out of all of those brackets? Because for the ones that he placed, or if we look at his Genesis 6 run, who he was stopped by... Um, Genesis 6 was, it broke the scale, it was the highest thing. He lost to Sam Sword and to Buzz, perfect. He lost at Frostbite to Tweak and Shutone, perfect, okay? In the eyes of what you could possibly lose to, okay? In a season of Smash, the top rated players are that. Collision, he dropped to Frozen, and he dropped to Light. So, a pretty shoddy loss, no offense to Frozen, and a pretty amazing loss. Double eliminated by Mars at Full Bloom. Then at SP3, he lost to Somo, unranked Japanese. And then Ken, unranked Japanese, but also historically amazing player. That's just, that's the game, right? It's hot. Ken right now, Kony, like you bet, like he's a top 20 player worldwide, but yeah, like, yeah, he yeah. doesn't go anywhere. So Raito and Proto Banham at Umabura Japan Major, Shoyo and Isam at Gamo, Sinji and Wadi at Momokan. Uh, Goma Kenpi and Leon at Smash and Splash. Goma Kenpi, not a Japanese player, but all, but actually a Midwest right, player. Yeah. Um, Goma <laughs> Kenpi, not a strong loss. And Leon at the time, and also now looking at it, he's 35th. So, so I, I, the thing that I think is really the tragedy to me... What's the, what is it? I, I think that... The, and I do think this is a tragedy. If Cosmos beat Leon... If he went up even one more spot at Smash and Splash, but he didn't have that Leon loss, I wonder if that would have been enough to give him the knife. I don't know. I think it would have to look, but I'm wondering if that. It's a non zero impact, right? Yes, I think it's a non zero impact. And the reason it's so tragic to me is because, like I was talking about before, nobody has a higher work ethic. Like, he cares so much, and he. Perceivably, uh, top yeah, ten. Perce- you know what I mean. Like he's he he 
He puts you know his how heart- people get about that, but yes, Cosmos's brand is. I don't give a shit how has. people get about it. I know that this kid has the dedication, <laughs> and he has such a devotion to the game, and it's like you run into something that you clearly were not ready for in a top level Bowser. Like, and I don't, I don't mean that as any disrespect to Cosmos because he's amazing. He's an incredible player, but I don't think he was ready for what Leon was putting out. And I just wonder if that one, just not being ready for that total curveball may have dropped in that one point. Just that's all it took, you know? Um, because the ninth there, I think that would have been big. And if he would have beat Leon, who's to say if he would have beat his next opponent, you know? Because he's consistently making these top eights. That roadblock might have been all it took to not get top ten. So I just, that's utterly tragic to me. Um, I think Cosmos is an incredible player, and I have told him this before. Again, I am an inkling doubter, and I think he is taking the character further than the character could go on its own. I think the inkling is top of high tier, not top tier. All the top players disagree with me, so take that with a grain of salt. I'm very stupid sometimes, and I say the wrong thing. But I do not think that inkling is as good as people think, and I think Cosmos is just incredible, and I think a part of that is his work ethic and his... um, like I said, his dedication to everything. So they made I the just, character work day one. I think that thirteenth at Smash and Splash. I have to imagine if he beat Leon, um, I think maybe that would have been, been enough, and then he actually could have kept going. I um, mean, it yes and no, but yes. I mean, it's not just the Leon, right? Uh, it's the fact that it's the Frozen and the yeah. It, it's the Frozen. It's the Goma Kempi. You know, it's the Double Prodigy. Okay. You know, what, what's what's difficult is we're still in a world where we, we live in a society, right? So placements are just like that badge for so many people until it's not, until someone says, well, what was the bracket? And then people are like, well, you know, I mean, it's just like, I always hark back to the same point on Fatality getting third at uh 2ggc civil war like yes Uh, he got no not even third second he got third second uh fatality a phenomenal player obviously he'd need this whole chat at the same time in a hundred man melee or no how many people are watching over 600 people man melee like fatality would do that but it was the bracket that he also was a part of that he did not have a choice and that's the other argument it's like well people don't have a choice in who gets upset and who's in front of them and whatnot it's like yeah that's true but also, like, you're seated to have an easier bracket. So, like, how does that, how, how, how like, where are we going to start drawing mm. the line? Like, you're yeah. seated in the top to have an easier time, perceivably, okay? You're not, sure. gonna, if you're second seed, you're not facing first until technically grands. What is the not last seed seat, like, facing first? The first seed. So, it's like, it gets very tenuous. It gets very contentious. And I think for Cosmos's case, I mean, yeah, like, the kid did phenomenal. The placements speak for themselves. The wins start to add context. Is it the end of the world? I mean, like, I know that he held a goal of, like, being, like, extremely in the top. Top 10 at the very least. Does yeah. it come as drawing for many people? Yeah. But I think also until you look at, like, the data, until you still, like, start to really dance with the whole thing, like, it'll just be lost. And so, mm-hmm. you know, to Cosmos, you could see the gap now. Uh, from Cosmos down to Raito, he had 3.3 points. And just to say this right now on record, the person who got 10th was not even, okay? Because, oh my gosh, like the like 10th is going to be uh, 83.4. Uh, the person that got 10th is several whole numbers above Cosmos. Not decimals, several whole numbers. Wow. So it's not like all of a sudden, like, oh, if it would have been this, it would have been that. Like, okay, okay, like that's good. It's, I'm just saying, okay, I'm, not, I'm just saying. You know, no, no, so, no, I hear you. so number okay. 10th is an 83.4 and we rounded it up like or 83.39 and Cosmos was 83.38. Um, several whole numbers above Cosmos, which as you see here in the gap, Cosmos is Zachary. That's a dip. Myron so is wait, Zachary. So, so number 10 is what? Sorry, 80. Several whole numbers above. I'm not going to say a score. What's wrong with you? Oh, I thought you just said it. Sorry. 
Was no, several numbers. whole numbers above. Okay, got you. Meaning I thought you said 84 points, so that was like... No, 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 no. Okay. I was saying he's not 83.4. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. That's why I was thrown off. Okay, he's several you. whole numbers above him. You know, it could be an 85, 86, 87. But gotcha. I'm just saying, like, it's not, it's not so clear cut. What's so clear cut is the fact that this kid always had a top eight showing when the stream and the Twitter and the Reddit was popping off. You want to go against that and say, you know, this algorithm's trash, blah, 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 like Cosmos should be in the top. I to you raise the losses he had and the inconsistencies in the lower bracket everything else i mean we're arguing about whether or not someone's into the top 10 or not of the entire twenty thousand people that played this season so at that point top 10 wouldn't satisfy you neither would 11th i mean to that i just offer um a q a that we're going to start now do you have any final uh, points well, yeah i think that um I, I think that visibility is a big part of this too and i think there are two players particularly in top 10 that have sort of fallen off the planet um in the past few months and this is season wide not today this is season this wide. Is yeah 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 february so. 2nd to july 7th not july 30th as it stands right now so that's another thing that people need to keep in mind like anyways right. go so on. so i think that there are two players that are in the top 10 that are again have kind of fallen off the earth that have very, very, very high peaks, and I think a lot of people were sort of hoping that Cosmos would make it higher because, you know, he's very well respected, has a great um, reputation for his ability, and, you know, obviously is incredibly consistent, very visible, like you said, he's always in the top eight on stream, he's not really that James who's, like, getting ninth and, like, may have a run that's totally invisible, like Captain Zack at Genesis, who we only saw, like, one stream set, like, Cosmos is always there. Um, yeah, and he was placed at ninth too, which you know, for right. everybody that you know, top ten in their minds is what they always said. Every list started with him near the bottom of the ten. Right. So I mean, I, I think that a lot of people sort of thought he was going to be eighth, ninth, or tenth. So to be, and, and I think the X factor kind of reflects that because it has him at ninth. So to have him at eleventh, it's kind of splitting hairs but it's also not because it's we're getting so high up in terms of so i don't know we could talk about this during the q a which we can lead into now but i just like the whole story of this is is it's a it's a sad one to me personally it's a sad one and you know he's also pg you know so here's the thing right he's pg he's pan and global pan and global rankings pan and global stats we're you know bankrolled by the whole outfit i mean it's how we're even able to like get these resources to get this editor in Japan to make these beautiful videos to get like coverage to like have tasks and myself and like the whole team work data like Cosmos is 10 Cosmos is over whoever was 10 now who you know I'm not gonna spoil but like the only other person that's PG in the top 10 is Mars and I don't think he got top 10 or else that would be the end of the rankings um, or 10th rather uh, Cosmos, Cosmos makes 10th then it's PG bias and it's PG put it put their boy in top ten. Like it almost is that it's almost as if like whatever doesn't fit your current narrative gets like struck down. And so it's like even then like we did, he he was placed according to what the results showed. Like we we're, weren't tinkering or moving anything beyond that once like we ran the tests. And then at eleventh Cosmos ended. So yeah, I mean historically seventh all throughout most of the majors that we had this season in the minds of everybody also playing inkling so no palutena no olimar bias uh inkling also with a lot of the understory being like best character in the game for the beginning still largely unproven um it hurts it hurts a lot to see but i don't think it's anything cosmos can't recover from and also for a first season showing like this if this i think is his floor so uh I think we're ready to start Q and A. What do you think? Yep, let's do it. Cool. Whew. So, uh, to anyone turning in, this is the PG Stats Mini Roundtable. We are now in hour one point five of the entire thing. We're gonna probably uh, take a few questions, shotgun a few. Um, if we've answered it and you're answering again or asking again, then we're just gonna. I mean, we have to move on. So sorry. Uh, I'm available on Twitter. Coney's available on Twitter. PG Stats is available on Twitter. You'll see below. So you can always like ask us privately if something comes up or if you miss the chat. Uh, I just refresh. Come see me at, at uh, come see me at Evo. We can yeah, talk. yeah. Coney's on the panel for the Japan rankings first time. Uh, so he's really happy about that. You can ask him any question you have about Japan. But getting started with what we got here. Um, psh, 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 psh. 
Let's see. Uh, I refresh the chat. So let's see. Stuart 98, the trusty Stuart, asks Panic Global. So in the PGR V5, the big change to the algorithm was the introduction of a consistency measure based on how often you didn't lose to the top 70 or so qualifying players. This is called the confidence factor. Uh, have there been any comparable, comparably sized changes to the formula since then? Uh, Taz can speak more to that, but as far as I know, there has been no new additions of that sort. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, confidence factors introduced in V5 is another metric to sort of get more into the stories between uh, placements and set counts. It basically measures how upset a player is to get if they lose to someone that's unranked or if they're appropriately losing to people perceivably at their level or above. For example, if I'm Leo, or no, if I lose to Leo, right, that would be considered an upset to everybody because I'm a nobody and Leo is a somebody. Um, for the purpose of the algorithm, that rating is then like super, super valuable because I beat Leo, someone not, who's not only top rated, but also uh, expected to just slap me like eyes closed. So nothing's been added. There's no new doohickeys. It's outplacements. Again, placements is just a number. Don't tell us a story. It's who you're outplacing. That's why collision was what it was. Uh, and head to heads. And those head to heads are scaled, okay, according to the event. So, all these set counts that you're seeing, even then, it's really hard to illustrate. And we're trying to find a, a, a illustrative way. But if I'm 5 5 against Coney, if four of those sets happen at an S tier and one happened at a C tier, that's a different story if it was 5 5 and they all happen at a C tier, okay? So, hopefully, that answers your question. Stuart, anyone that you see, Coney, that you want to pick and choose and ask? Um, I'm seeing a lot of questions regarding the algorithm, so I'll let you. Um, okay, so take non-algorithm questions. Take questions that you think you can answer. Um, well, let me see, because I'm seeing a lot of. Uh, you talk about X Factor. Will it be publicly released? But I don't know what you're talking about in terms of like, what the, because because the X Factor is there. It's on the players. Um, it's on the YouTube card, so you can see it. I don't know if you mean, like, the algorithm for it, because it's just I, a I, th I think they mean, so. like, the entire... So we had 100 players listed, 100 players who qualified. Sure. Um, so 50 of them obviously didn't make it, and five of them were uh, Area 51. So they're asking if the full list will be released. And um, I don't know the answer to that right now. Um, usually we do, but usually that's, like, an extra... That's DLC. Um, it's just extra content we put towards the end. Uh, right now, what's about to take all of our resources and efforts is making this tier list of uh, epic proportions, and that's going to involve surveying every top player we know on top of Reddit. So stay tuned for that, but X Factor, just uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't wait on it. But if it's been like so, a month, just hit me up. One of the questions is, uh, Willow I Spy 346, I hope I got the name right, Willow Spy, whatever. Uh, what player so far do you think personally feel has the most potential for next season? Um, I'm going to answer that question pretty cryptically because I think it who it is whoever adapts best to 4.0. Um, I don't think we know yet, and I think that we've seen that the patches can shift things around considerably. And it's going to be um, live at SmashCon, which is like super... I don't know, dude. That's like... Yeah. Isn't it live so, right now? Or is it live in eight minutes? It's... um. I don't know. I It's going live at, at some point tonight. It's going to be nuts. But regardless, I'm not a big like I'm not a big believer in Hero. I think Hero is going to be sort of a middling, difficult to play, but not worth the time investment. Yeah, very clunky, not worth the time investment if you already have a good character. I don't see people like I don't see Joker was good enough and easy enough, not easy, but easy enough to say, "Okay, I want to drop my character and pick up Joker." I don't think like Tweak is going to say, well, Tweak actually might do it because he's known for switching around characters. But I don't think somebody like doesn't seem like a Tweak character though. If I'm right, being I don't honest. think so either. But I'm saying, I'm saying I could see Tweak doing that if he liked the character enough. But I don't see Sam Sora saying, oh, Peach got a little nerfed. Let me switch over to Hero. Um, I think Hero is going to be that kind of character where he's strong in the right hands, but there's no reason to drop your main if you're already succeeding. Dude, are you gonna get with. thwacked in Evo Grand Finals? That's like. Just on his skull. That's on his skull. <laughs> but but there's a lot of uh, hidden changes in 4.0 that we don't know about yet until we see the patch notes. Dude, and it could be reason... a shield stun. It could be something. Sorry, go on. Yeah, it could be. It could be anything. Could be like mechanics of the game. Could be character specific. But Global. we've already seen uh, casualties of that because we saw Void 
who, again, mm. had a very strong start of the season, but Myron. he's struggling right now. At Thunder Smash, he had an abysmal showing. And I know that part of that is just, you know, Void can sometimes be off and on, but he did not have a good showing at all, and it didn't look like the same player. Uh, Myron, of course, being a casualty of, you know, pretty considerable nerfs to Olimar. So I think the answer to your question, I'm not going to give you a name, but I'm going to say whoever escapes uh, unscathed, by whatever verdict is going to come on high. Maybe Snake is going to get the chopping block this time, and, you know, MVD is going to suffer. Or maybe Joker is going to be looked at because of Leo. I mean, I, I think that the patches generally have been pretty on point. Um, very subtle. Very yes, subtle quality very of life-ish changes. Yeah. No Bayonetta gutting from Smash 4 to now. They're really surgical, but I also think that at the top level of play, everything counts. Oh, and my I God, think yeah. That Whichever player can adapt best to whatever changes lie ahead of us, that person's going to rock it up. Um, so, unfortunately, I'm not going to give you a name because we're on the cusp of something big. So, there you mm -hmm. go. Yeah. Um, not only who escapes unscathed, but also, yeah, like you said, who adapts the fastest. Personally, though, I mean, to say a name, I mean, it is so, it's so weird because, like, you think about the, the games that really popularized patching and, like, League of Legends, like, oh, they nerfed. Lux, well, there's another AP champion I can get or whatever. And yeah. I think with fighters, it's like, dude, that's like my main. That's like no one yeah. plays like no one plays yeah. like Palutena except Palutena. So if they like mess with their kid too much, I can't just switch to like another quote unquote AP champion or ADC. Um it's like No, it's not the same at all. Like I, I've I've been playing League for years and years and like I'm a I'm I was I'm blessed to main a champion that's always good, which is Twisted Fate. Like even when he's bad, he's still good. I'm very lucky, and he hasn't been reworked or anything. But like, sure. if you play somebody like um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a character that's always on the up and down. Evelyn. Kha'Zix, right? I mean, Kha'Zix, oh, yeah, Evelyn, Kha'Zix, yeah, yeah. Evelyn. Like you're either they could be insane or trash. Yeah. You're thriving or you're floundering, and I think that yeah. some like Smash characters don't swing one way or the other but the time investment that you put into your main in smash and your personal identification and all this other stuff like it's like you don't it, it's a totally different world but having your character like stripped away of stuff can be devastating yeah i mean a peach nerf by and large means samsora and umeki and mudes got the hit you know it doesn't yeah. mean anything else other than that so it's like it's very crazy and then on top of that the global changes that are yet to come. I know that for the first couple, they did a global projectile change to kind of help with pairing being more worth it. Um, projectiles got marginally worse, but Wolf is still doing Wolf and, you know, everybody yeah. else is still partying. But again, tonight, you know, like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe, who knows? So speculation is a waste of time, but also fun. Um, <laughs> but again, if I have to give a name, I mean, I don't know. Let's, let's give it to, uh, I don't know. I wish I had the list of the full 50 in front of me, because now, right now, I'm just looking at 11 through 20. It's weird, because I do. So, let me see. Well, if you do, then drop some. Um... Da, 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 da. TF is trash in Assassin Metas. He can't lame versus Fizz Zed unless you're Dopa. That's what I'm saying. This is not a league yeah, cast. You can, no, but if you're good at TF, you can live. I played TF at a high level, and those lanes aren't awful. You know what? The, you know what? I think go klepto or grasp. Grasp is amazing against those characters. All right, we're anyway, gonna sorry. we're gonna put a stop sorry, to that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, I personally think things could get very scary with Salem, but that's also just like oh yeah, yeah the yeah. Salem effect. Uh, right. But on the lower end, if I were to choose someone after thirty five, I mean, I think Leon will be kept in check pretty soon. Um, I think so too. Like I think that's just like dude, Bowser's wild, right? But I don't think Bowser can thrive beyond thirtieth. And if I'm wrong, I mean, that's crazy how heavy makes it that hard. Because if you look at the top so far, uh, Cosmos, that's a midweight, lightweight, midweight, lightweight, inkling, um, mm -hmm. like Mario weight to me. Zachary with his... Midweight, yeah. Yeah, Zach, I mean, Wolf is, yeah. Myron, Olimar, Gluttony, that's a heavyweight, okay, Wario, T, Pac-Man, midweight, Esam, lightweight, with Pikachu, MVD, Snake is heavy, right? He's like, he's got that girth, right? Mm -hmm. uh james with crom midweight marthweight common with yeah so like heavy heavy it's just wario right so 
I don't I don't see it with with Leon and then apart from that I don't know maybe you know what I want to see Larry I want to see the comeback of Larry but there we go Easy I don't answer. I don't <laughs> think go. I don't think it'll happen with Fox so we'll see what he does uh, yeah, I think he, he's, he was playing he had Wolf some really hot streaks yeah. he had some really hot streaks with a uh, Wolf this past weekend so like mm-hmm. the there are glimmers there hopefully he can sort of bust out yeah so and Larry's a safe bet great player great person great. Um, everything yeah. else. So, uh, this comes out like every other question. So, Ally, is he going to be in the rankings? Is he going to be in the rankings? Is he going to be in the top 10? Is oh, he going to be featured? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, what I'm going to say public at this time is that in the algorithm, he's been featured. He has been absent from the player cards and the notable wins and losses and sets and everything. If you've noticed, the videos are a subjective presentation of the rankings. It chooses to show the best of the best uh, that happened during the season. Ally pending the controversy and everything else isn't part of that but he is featured in the algorithm which is what i could say at this point um full statement um probably on thursday uh we want to give the top 10 its time also it goes like directly into evo so for anyone wondering um is he going to be on the pgr he's factored into the algorithm so not going to add to the top 10 spoiler hype but that's the official answer he's factored into the algorithm um ally for people who don't know did a lot this season that um ranked very highly and he did a lot of things with a lot of players in bracket that like really surprised a lot of people um really crazy wins not too many bad losses i don't think so take that as you will that's the last thing i'll say on ally wait for the official statement but apart from that um we're trying like our mission is to have everything be as impartial as possible and our mission is to rate the best 50 players in the world for a given period amount of time in a given amount of tournaments so that's a long-winded legal answer, and um, what I hope people will see on Thursday as being the only thing we could have done. So, I don't know if you have anything to add, Coney, but I think we can go to the next question. Nope. I think that's fine. Cool. So, uh, coming up on our last two or three, because I'm boiling right now in this room. Um, ba- 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 do you see one? Uh, no, I, I think a lot of people have sort of... All the questions are up at the top, so... Okay, well, I luckily refreshed the chat, so I can't say anything. Okay. Um, if you have one you want to read out, I'll take two more, and then we can head out. Let me see. Uh, Bastos says, do you think the result of EVO will be close to the result of the PGR? Not necessarily. Um, that's you mean not like really... if whoever gets first is going to be first? Right, yeah. I... Nah. Not Influential, at all. but not... Yeah. Influential, but it's never... It's definitely not one-to-one. Like, no, one, no, one, dude, one. no. I mean... Um, it yeah it's just yeah because like again even like ninth at evil won't necessarily mean what ninth means to us because it could have been a lucky bracket it could have been a bunch of heroes with Dwax dude that upset everybody and you got to ninth beating a bunch of like b-listers from socal or norcal right which no offense to them but like it could happen right um but yeah it'll be largely influential it pretty much broke the tts um it's already what at 3k people i think three 3k yeah, plus. something like that yeah and, and also keep in mind somebody just pointed out there that's not on 4.0 so that's not going to be with the new balance change the new balance patch that's going to be for but smash con, the smash con will be and smash con yep. also broke the tts hint hint uh i don't know if they've released numbers but they're high very high very high very high um here's some let's see okay we'll take this last one because the other ones have been answered before so i enlist anybody to direct people to the correct information but for now from gofu or goefu or goefu we have Panda global how do how does bad losses how do bad losses affect player scores would players like cosmos benefit from not attending c tiers if it meant not dropping sets to unranked players the question here is would cosmos benefit from not losing to unranked players. Yes, Cosmos would benefit from not losing to unranked players. Uh, I think the real, I guess, root of the matter is like, you know, should you attend if you're gonna risk? Um, and I guess the word, uh, what's the phrase? It's like, um, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Boom! That's how the PGR algorithm is formatted. Um, but no, if you don't attend things and you just placed highly at one thing, there's a decaying factor. I mean, it's it's in um 
the algorithm is not major, but at the same time, if you just like place first at Evo and didn't go on anything else, you're not going to get first. Everybody else is doing stuff. Everybody else is winning and losing. Everybody else is placing. You just sat there with first and naturally that starts to decay. So um, my advice to every top player who's ever asked me, hey, should I go to this event? Hey, should I? It's like, listen, if you go and lose, you will be going and losing. But you're asking me to like almost ask like like see if you can eliminate all possible risk and not going to a tournament means you don't suffer any losses but that also means you, you're not able to gain any wins so while well, you didn't go to i don't know it was a really hyped tournament last season um like if you don't go to pound right like myron did and like void did so it's again kind of like a risk assessment and at the end of the day like we don't make it ambiguous because smash tournaments and event making is ambiguous because like listen s tiers at one point were every other weekend and now yeah. they're like more on the monthly side more every three weeks uh summer of smash sometimes back to back but like if people knew that they could or couldn't go to a tournament and get or not get a certain rank gaming of the system would even be like that would be the name of the game, you know? And right yeah. now, currently the only way to game the system is to have invitationals at your house in the backyard and have <laughs> a bunch of S tiers show up. And then again, you're potentially losing points because someone has to get gonna say, second. You're gonna, get, you're, gonna, someone, you're gonna lose. Like, yeah, someone has gonna... to get third. So invitationals, it, kind of a two-parter for other people that are asking, how are we gonna count invitationals? Da -da -da -da. Um, invitationals are scaled back. The conga controversy caused essentially most of the invitational counting to halt. Glutoni would have been higher for what he did at Ultimate Summit. But also, PAX East with zero in 2017. Uh, the one before Congas or right after counted just fine and no one said anything because it didn't go against their own personal biases. Aside from Nairo, or not Nairo, aside from Anti losing to Pug West. Uh, you know, no quote unquote undeserved wins were had, but people were essentially upset that we correctly and effectively ranked Conga for going somewhere and racking up the losses and wins that he did. Um, which again, accessibility, exclusivity, that's a whole nother conversation. Um, but we're trialing it. So it's scaled back much more. Um, this past Thunder Smash 2 is a C slash B tier that will be revealed once the top 10 is revealed because based on the points, uh, since the buzz was in attendance, if we say it's one or the other, you can deduce uh, whether or not he's top five or top six through ten because uh -huh. the TTS is scaled uh, for next season one to five, six to ten, eleven through fifteen. So according to who goes, it stacks the tournament more and more on top of the general entry count score, which we always take the higher of the two. So before US bias comes into play, which I mean, it's at this point, it's a given. Um, because of the fact that no one else has an Evo or a Genesis. Uh, yeah. Hate the game, not the player. Um, yeah, like we always take the higher count. So if you're in New England and you want to put on a B tier, but Light and Mars are ignoring your calls because they're Hollywood and they're top 10 <laughs> now. Uh, and even Shoyo like, leaves you on red and Tri-State boys are just not even giving you the time of day. Get like 600 or so people and you got yourself a B tier, I think, if I'm not mistaken, or 700, 800, however many it is, um, or 400 rather for a B tier, 600 for an A tier. I think that remains largely unchanged. Um, but yeah, it's going to end it for the Q&A. Coney and I, we are spent. I am sweating bullets. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah that, but was, uh, that, was a good, that was a good show. That, that was, was a good, good show. 11, or not 11, why did I say that number? The, the, the first, actually. Wow, we're going into a new month um are we is it tuesday oh it is tuesday tomorrow's the 31st of july august 1st we're going to have the top 10 reveal finally everything will be there the top 50 will have its own you know its own era right we're going directly into evil on friday everybody's gonna be popping off everyone's gonna get upset everyone's gonna be winning uh i don't know what's gonna happen so thursday same time nice. same place you can wait coney when do you leave for evo I was going to ask you, so I'm going to be, I actually, I'm leaving Monday or Thursday morning. Um, we've got a Panda Media Day, so I'm going to be doing that, but I think I'm going to be free at night. So what time is it? Los Angeles, is it three hours? or, or uh, So Vegas. seven here would be four there. Is it three hours? It's Yeah, it's three hours. Okay. So for, 
I think I can do. We do our planning uh, live, everybody. This is how it happens. Yeah, sorry, I, the media, the media stuff I have to do is one to three. I'll see if I can get a hold of a laptop. They'll probably have a spare laptop in the Panda media. I can come to you live from the Panda HQ at Evo, <laughs> like the Panda Room at <laughs> the Suite. That they're oh, that's gonna be nice. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, we should be able to do it. I'll let you know more as I know more. Um, but I'm free all of Thursday, other than the Panda stuff. So. Cool. So. Yeah. Uh, with that final bit, you heard it here first. Smash Center, um, <clears throat> top twenty through eleven edition. I'm I'm pretty much give, given everything I can. Uh, Coney, thanks for soldiering on. Smash Center, Coney, Suara, PG stats, always at the same time, same place for the most part. But this Thursday, depending on uh, what Coney and his available availability <laughs> looks like, uh, stay tuned. We're gonna do the evening roundtable for. Top 10 through 1, that's the top 10 for the PGRU. First ever PGR release for Smash Ultimate, first ever top 50 in the world acknowledged. So, um, stay tuned to that. Uh, social media again, you've seen it on the page. Add the PG stats for updates, it's gonna be published on Red Bull. Uh, be sure when the link comes out to click it the second you see it and then tell us <laughs> that you got a 404. The second, but the moment it comes out, we need to know that the link is dead. Of course, internet time is a fickle. Uh, a fickle being so i mean it, it, it's gonna it's gonna be at 2 p.m eastern so thursday top 10 uh maybe the world will implode by then who knows if 11 through 20 was this spicy i swear i wish everybody could be like the 41 through 50 because those guys are just grateful to even be named <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. uh but people's careers are on the line people's seasons season two's already started thunder smash invitational 2 all these other tournaments and now evo already going to change everything we just showed you so stay tuned to that coney and i are going to sign off uh, you can find us where we said earlier before, and uh, we're going to say Heroes a good night. out. Go play him. Go play Hero. Good night. Oh, my God. 9-10. See you, everybody. Goodbye.